everybody. I am Johan E. Lejish. Considering the current situation wherein our faith as Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Christians is being constantly attacked, it is important for us to understand why we are Jacobite Orthodox Christians. In Matthew 16 verse 16, Saint Peter, the head of the apostle, declares about Jesus, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Jesus replied to Saint Peter saying, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Our church, the Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Church, is built on this rock of faith. As mentioned in Acts 11 verse 26, the followers of Christ were called Christians for the first time in Antioch. With this, it is evident that Antioch is the birthplace of Christianity and the Christians. The roots of the Syriac Orthodox Church can be traced back to this very dawn of Christianity. Saint Peter established the Holy See in Antioch in 37 AD and he became the first patriarch. Taking into consideration Jesus' words in Mark 16 verse 15, Go into all world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The apostles got ready for their journey to different parts of the world. As per the direction from Saint Peter, the apostles started their journey to different parts of the world. In 52 AD, Saint Thomas came to India to spread the gospel. Many people believed the gospel, received baptism and converted to Christianity. Saint Thomas established seven and a half churches in India and ordained many priests. This marked the beginning of the history and religious identity of the Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Church in Kerala. Saint Thomas was martyred in AD 72 in Mylapur. He is known as the Apostle of India, but he did not establish any holy thrones in India. For the next 300 years following the death of Saint Thomas, the church in India weakened. The community had to face many obstructions and opposition. This was mainly because there had been no one to succeed the priests ordained by Saint Thomas. The Christian population in India were like sheep without a shepherd. Considering the situation in Malankara, the church synod held under the Patriarch of Antioch and all the East immediately decided to send a delegation to Kerala and accordingly in AD 345, around 400 odd persons led by Bishop Mor Joseph of Edessa and Thomas of Cana Many priests and beacons arrived in Kerala. In this way, the local Christian community was revived, both socially and spiritually. The Edesans brought to Kerala the liturgy and the Syriac language. The term Syrian Christian stems, stems from this assimilation. It also brought the churches in Kerala under the universal body of the Christian church and an apostolic see from which they were to derive episcopal visits and priestly ordinations according to the orthodox faith. More Joseph of Edessa trained lots of believers and ordained many priests as the priesthood had become non-existent in India. After this, there were lots of Syrian migrations to India and the communication channel, channel was thus reopened with the Patriarch of Antioch. This has helped the growth of Syriac Christians in India. In AD 394, the relics of St. Thomas were taken to Edessa, a place that was under the authority of the Patriarch of Antioch. From the time of the Apostles till the 4th century, our church underwent many persecutions. Many believers and church fathers were killed. Many were thrown to the wild animals and some were forcefully converted. The reign of Emperor Constantine was a golden era for our church. 
But again, from 6th century, we were persecuted and we lost hundreds of churches, dairas and monasteries across the world. After the Chalcedon Council in 451 AD, the Syrian church came under much persecution, particularly from the Byzantines. Many bishops were sent to exile. By the year 544, the Syrian church was in an abysmal situation with only three bishops remaining. It was that time that Mor Yaakov Burdono emerged to rejuvenate the church. Mor Yaakov would travel across the entire land reviving the church. He managed to consecrate lots of bishops and hundreds of priests and deacons. The Byzantines in their seventh council described the Syrian Orthodox Church as the Jacobit Church after Yaakov Burdono. Though their intention was to ridicule the Syrian Orthodox Church, we take it as an honor to be thus attached to this great church father. We should remember the numerous contributions of Mor Yaakov Burdono, without which our church would have become extinct in the face of these persecutions. In the early 9th century, the Syrian fathers Mor Sabor and Mor Afroth reached Malankara with a group of immigrants and helped in the growth of Jacobite Syriac churches in Malankara. In the 700 year period between the second Syrian migration and the arrival of the Portuguese, the Christian community in Kerala was sustained by the intermittent arrival of metropolitans sent by the Sea of Antioch. From the 14th century onwards, the Syriac Patriarchate of Antioch gradually became weak following the continued persecution by the Romans and the Nestorians. The ports were blockaded by the Portuguese. The Syrian bishops sent by Antioch were unable to reach Kerala. The Roman Catholic Church gained a foothold in Malankara with the arrival of Vasco da Gama, the famous Portuguese sailor, in 1498. In 1599, the Roman Catholic Archbishop Menzies, with the help of local rulers, convened the historical synod of Diamper and thereafter started forcibly converting the Syrian churches as Catholics, burned all the historical documents and thereby terrifying the Syrian Christians. The Malankara church had to suffer a lot under the Roman Catholic bishops. Following persistent appeals from the Jacobite Syrian Christians in Malankara, Mor Ignatius Ahatullah came to India in 1653. But the Portuguese arrested him, tied him up and cast him into the ocean. On hearing this, the Jacobite Syrian Christian community in India was outraged. Around 25,000 Jacobite Syrian Christians assembled at Matancheri and took the oath at the bent cross, Kunan Kurishi, declaring that they and their future generations would ever be loyal to the throne of Antioch and they also vowed to fight against the atrocities of the Roman Catholics. This came to be known as the historical Conan Kursha Satya. The Malankara church sent a request to the Patriarch of Antioch again and in 1665, St. Gregorius Abdul Jalil of Jerusalem was deputed to Malankara. The link between Malankara and Antioch that was broken and remained separated for about 150 years was re-established with the arrival of this Holy Father. And once again, Malankara Church became an integral part of the Syrian Orthodox Church, adopting its rituals, rites and liturgy as before. Over the next few years, there were many splits in the Jacobite Syriac Church due to influences from the British rule, Protestants and because of power-hungry metropolitans. I would like to mention three major splits. Syrian Church of Toriyur Consecration of Katumangat Abraham Ramban as Morkurilos resulted in a split and the foundation of Syrian Church of Toriyur in 1774. 
Martama Church with the establishment of British East India Company missionaries from Britain started their work in India and some of priests sided with the European missionaries and modified the liturgy to suit the protestant views this led to the birth of the Martama Church in 1889 Indian Orthodox Church Another split happened when the Malankara Metropolitan started to defy the orders of the Holy See of Antioch. A Catholicos was illegally ordained with the help of a former patriarch who was dethroned by the Holy Synod and this had caused another major split in the Syriac Orthodox Church and resulted in the formation of the Indian Orthodox Church. Throughout its long history, the Malankara Jacobite Syrian Church had to put up a bit a stiff challenge trials and tribulations however by god's grace then and now it continues to practice the true apostolic faith taught by its holy fathers and continues to be part of the ancient universal syriac orthodox church with its distinct identity Now let's see some of the rich heritages of the Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Church. Orthodoxy is confirming to the Christian faith as represented in the creeds of the early church. The Syriac Orthodox Church teaches that it is the one holy Catholic and apostolic church founded by Jesus Christ and its metropolitans are the successors of the apostles. and that the patriarch is the successor to saint peter on whom primacy was conferred by jesus christ the syriac language is the aramic language itself and the arameans are the syrians themselves the disciples the first preachers of christianity were syriac speakers speakers the name syriac comes to imply the christian faith at the dawn of christianity syriac was the mother tongue of the original inhabitants of Antioch. The Church of Antioch used the Syriac language in its religious rites. Our church celebrated the first Eucharist using the Syriac liturgy written by St. James, the brother of our Lord. The same liturgy is used in the Syrian Orthodox Church all over the world to this day. Our Syriac Orthodox faith is clearly summarized in the Nicene Creed. Most of the churches don't have a creed at all. Our creed was composed and adapted at the first universal synod and revised with additions in the Synod of Constantinople. No other church can talk about a creed which is so old. We should be proud of this. All our prayers end with the Nicene Creed shows the importance of Nicene Creed in our life. The Holy Qurbana is the perfection of all other sacraments. Saint James, the brother of our Lord and the first bishop of Jerusalem, was the first to conduct the Holy Qurbana. Syriac Orthodox Church has a wealth of about 80 liturgies. All the liturgies are based on Saint James liturgy. But nevertheless, Saint James liturgy is the finest, the first and the most important of all our church is 2000 years old and the faith was built up by the apostles our jacobit syriac orthodox church is called mother of all churches the fathers of the syrian church of antioch made great and memorable contributions to the study of the holy bible both old and new testaments it was their translation of the holy bible into the syriac language that came to be known as peshitto or simple our church fathers have gone through lot of persecutions for the syriac orthodox faith amidst all the adversity the church produced several is illustrious saints whose lives and works had such immense influence not only on the syriac tradition but to christianity overall the rich liturgical heritage of the syriac orthodox church is one of our legacies in spite of all the adversities caused by persecutions and schisms 
Jacobit Syriac Orthodox Church is progressing and growing active. We should be proud of our rich heritage and we should stand firm against any invasion to our rich heritage and lineage. So as children of Jacobit Syriac Orthodox Church, we should continue the faith our forefathers have given to us and it is our responsibility to maintain that faith and give to generations to come. We, the children of St. George Jacobit Syriac Orthodox Church Sunday School, Martha Hurley, Bangalore Diocese, reaffirm our solidarity and proclaim our faith to the Holy See of Antioch. Our Patriarch, His Holiness more and more Ignatius of Frame II, our Catholicos, His Beatitude more Bartholios Thomas I, and our Diocesan Metropolitan, His Grace Isaac more Ostatius. Andyokya Malangal Bendam, Nina Varote, 